Here we are. Hi, Nancy. We are here. Hi, Andre. Um, Andre and I were talking earlier this week, and we were talking in that wonderful world that's uh, fenced in by polls and people's opinions of things and funny quotes and weird memes and stuff. And he and I decided that when we got to talking uh, kind of out of that loop, that this fall is going to be a very interesting time for a lot of people. A lot of people have already felt a lightning of the energy. And you talk about energy, it's where we've gone through Lionsgate where we were pointed, uh, our galaxy was pointed directly at the galactic center. Now we're shifting away and we have a year before we get back to that kind of energy wave. There's a lot of energy waves coming in around us that I just find it's interesting that scientists say um, until they can measure it, it doesn't exist. But as soon as they measure it, they start finding all the waves that sensitives have been touching for a long time and feeling lightened by or darkened by. They, they go, oh, yeah, well, that's here on this scale. And a, a place where that really happens a lot is with ley lines, the earth energy lines, which wrap all around the world. And they're ley lines, dragon lines. There's all kinds of words for them. <clears throat> but they're sort of pathways that are, it's kind of a shield that goes around our earth. And I've been following them now for about five years, which is nothing compared to how long many people have been. But they've been getting, they've been moving, changing rapidly. They've been getting wider. They've been getting more sensitive and lasting where they, where you can really feel them when you walk through them for longer periods of time. And there are people who study the ley lines better than I do, but they're telling us that now we're getting so much photonic energy from where we are in the universe and it's feeding us, it's making us feel more optimistic at times. It can also, if you lose touch with it, which we do, when our ego gets involved, it says, I'm not believing that stuff. And so all of a sudden, you're kind of floating around a space with nowhere to go. But all those energies, when some of the early people like Rory Duff were st studying them, they couldn't measure them. And they invented, he, he's a scientist, he invented tools to measure it. And they're saying now they're getting thicker, wider, longer, and straighter. And that by their estimates, they're going to lock in place in December, right around the solstice. I'm right, yeah, it's the solstice. And so I've been kind of watching this, and I have a ley line in front of my house, and I go out and visit it periodically to see what's going on. And it's stayed since the last uh, solstice into the equinox, which is coming up on the 20th. And Usually it kind of fades and you can't feel it as much, but it's like as strong as ever out there. And um, so the earth is shifting energies. And I kind of want to talk to Andre about the fact that this energy is it's invisible. It comes through us as little bitty teeny tiny photons. But the stars have for a long time, they'll use a lot of astrology to talk about energetic shifts and planet placements that can help us get ready for this. So that's kind of what we're talking about. And if it bores you to tears, leave now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it is true that you can see this in, especially in, in the astrology in the planetary stations, which in overall terms, they, they are like optical illusions because they relate to planets retrograding or mm -hmm. going forward and they're not doing that it's really the earth doing its thing making it mm -hmm. seem like they're doing that but that's how astrology works and you know everyone remembers the late june period that was a saturn neptune made a station mm -hmm. and it correlated with you know quite a shock with the the you know the, the biden um you know trump debate and uh, it's, the, it's just where you can see that stations can then lead to a lot of unhappy people, although in that case, the right-wingers were happier not realizing that what had happened was going to shift the energy in another station that happened, mm -hmm. 
on July 21st, that was the era station, which is the entry of a woman into it and so on. Mm -hmm. And to your point about late in the year, particularly November, and you saying, okay, the energy is getting lighter, but then in November it can get a little sticky again. Well, that's another Saturn station, right? Mm -hmm. And you can almost anticipate this. It just feels like you can see what's going to happen, that Kamala wins and then Trump doesn't accept and puts the country once again through, I don't know, whatever, legal challenges. You know, I, I don't think he's going to have a lot to work with myself. I think it's going to be worse than in 2020. But again, dark energy or like just that sense that something heavy is happening. But I suspect some people are going to be a lot more upset than others. Let's just say mm -hmm. that, right? And then December, really the whole point is when you move away from stations, you, you, the energy starts to to get easier, right? So that's on that alone, uh, you've got a pattern that clears. And Saturn stations are, are the hardest, for sure, or it can be the hardest. Pluto is close behind because Pluto, like for example, back in October of 23, that Pluto station was right on, you know, correlated with the outbreak in Israel and Gaza. Mm -hmm. That was that was that. So that can be uh, tricky as well. So uh, for sure, that's where it's going. But then there's the individual pattern around this, where no matter what's going on outside you, you're always a choice as to what you do within yourself, mm -hmm. even in difficult situations, because. You know, if you let yourself be drawn in by the negative energy, and I know it's pretty hard. I mean, I remember that late June period. That that's tricky mm -hmm. for anybody, you know, because it puts you in a, it can put you in a dark space from something mm -hmm. you're seeing. But nevertheless, there there are no options around. You have to figure out a way to stay centered, stay balanced. And uh, what kind of things do you find most useful when it comes to that? I always have to remember I was raised in an Irish family. No matter how good it could get, they were always saying, just wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to turn on you. My, my mother personified that part of Saturn. You just wait. <laughs> you know? And mm -hmm. so what I learned to do is I just, I guess I learned it too when I was raising children. Um, I, one day, uh, the charming young man from CLSB was teething and I, he was giving me no rest. He was letting me know his mouth hurt and he didn't like it. And I'm the big person. I'm supposed to fix it. And I finally, a friend of mine named Sally came over to help me. She said, I'll just rock the baby for a while. When they get on your last nerve, you just became a closed circuit and you'll just feed each other. And it, when I came back out and I'd rested a little bit and I was feeling better and I, I said, I'm not sure I can do this. And she said, the one thing you learn raising children is nothing lasts forever. It will go away. She says, so what you hold on to is just like what happened to you today. I came over and it, you know, we got some relief and it went away. You just have to build those things into your day. It's only when we get into that very, and I have been there at times in my life, that very dark space where you say, it's going to be like this forever. Well, the one thing you know from the planets and the stars and w watching your chart, everything's always moving. So it's going one direction or the other. And the other yeah. thing that I do is um, I just let let go the best I can of that pain because I know it's my ego saying it's so awful for me instead of saying there's a bigger world out there. Things are gelling differently. Get curious, figure out what's happening and then move on and that's that's sort of my way of handling it um i have the cards and i'll read the cards and the cards will say it's dark today and then i'll throw cards for three weeks from now and they'll be very different you know but sometimes sometimes knowing something's coming can help you like if we all understand we're going to get all hyped up for those who are liking the way things are moving politically now you're going to get really excited about it. <clears throat> it can go down too. It can be downturns. And having run political races, I keep trying to tell my candidate, you have a great day and it's wonderful, but then you just have to get back in the trenches and do the little things you have to do to make the campaign move forward. 
that are not nearly as much fun. It's not always going to be fun. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And, and this is the thing that if, if Saturn is active, because one thing to say, okay, so in November, it's the collective, there's a big thing happening, but then there is the correlation to your own chart when it's, when mm -hmm. it's active. And I mean, I've been at this decades and I'm really into it, even just for myself. I, mm -hmm. I want to study it. I want to know how it works. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy because I'll, I'll think, okay, I got it. And then the next visit I get, I realize how tricky it is because things just seem to arrange themselves when it's around. It's, it, you, this is why it's spoken of as something that tests you, that really mm -hmm. wants to see, okay, well, how much do you really believe this? How much are you really willing to practice this way, right? Mm -hmm. And it really comes down to knowing that planets and signs, but especially planets, they have a range of options. It's not like the planet is one thing. It has a way of expression that is very good all the way to very bad. And Trump is a great example of corrupting everything and doing everything mm -hmm. in the worst way possible. But if you do Saturn in the best possible way, because it's the narrowing energy in life, it's the contracting mm -hmm. energy, it's got all kinds of routes where you won't feel good about that. Because if you feel like your life is contracted, you're hemmed in, you're mm -hmm. stuck, well, that's no good. But then if you realize the stellar use of contraction is focus. So right. it's key under Saturn, focus. And what do you focus on? Focus on good things, focus on positivity, focus on expansion, which is what Jupiter is. That's how those two work together. If you figure it out, that you just mm -hmm. keep going with that polarity, then you're fine, even though you might be doing it. And you have to also say, I'm doing this and it doesn't seem to be working as well. <laughs> as usual, but I know that it's going to pass, as you said, because cycles are that way. You know, you're in Saturn, even a really extended Saturn would be, for example, mid-June to mid-July, like a, a whole month, you know, where it's, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it's going to move. And this is, is one of, for me, one of the biggest lessons in astrology going back many years was when I didn't quite believe it, I would be in a jam and I'd be thinking, really, is this going to change? I, I don't know. And then yeah. I would see a change. And then you realize, yeah, it's just, you can wait it out. But what's great about this is that if you take this attitude and you train that focus, then it's another thing that you kick in with Saturn that is really useful. Because Saturn rules uh, momentum and inertia. And mm -hmm. what always hounds us is if our inertia is more negative, our you know overall momentum, mm -hmm. because we get stuck in that negativity. But every time we work to develop positivity, expansive energy, enthusiasm, optimism, then you build that. And so then you're in better shape for the next time Saturn visits you because you already know, I got no two ways of doing this. There's one way to do this and I'll do it that way. And I'm not going to be shaken, you know, in, in my in my belief because you've built the, it becomes like the karma that you've built, so to speak, right? right? It's like, it's like Saturn's there to make us react. And as you know, if you've studied meditation at all, mm -hmm. is you learn to all the little things that swing into your head to what they want you to react, you have to say, no, thank you for sharing, move on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people say, well, that's unrealistic. It's happening around you. You have to pay attention. No, you don't. Turn the damn TV off. You know, you will live two weeks without seeing Rachel Maddow's face. Yeah, yeah, or you even have to, I mean, you could do something a little more a, a different, let's say, you could, you know, like how when you watch a movie and the movie is showing some really awful stuff, Right. one way to pull back is you realize, oh, no, this is someone, something created this, all of it is, is fake, mm -hmm. but it's playing with my emotions. So pretend you're behind the camera and you're, you're the one making this movie. Mm -hmm. Now it creates an interrupt pattern you can literally do that with politics, but it's quite hard because you, you watch something and you think, how can these people be doing this? You know, it gets into you, but it's still the same thing. This is what goes to the, you know, the Buddhist idea that it's the whole thing is a dream. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a different level. I mean, you that, that re seeing everything is a dream doesn't help you pay your bills. You, you know, then you have to 
pay your bills and do things mm -hmm. <laughs> on the material plane. But nevertheless, it's very useful, right, to disconnect. Or as you say, turn the TV off, take some action, do something that says, I am not going to be in this negative place. Because the other thing, and you probably will agree with this, is uh, if you dwell in any place that is negative, this is the whole idea of the attraction principle. You'll attract more. Like bad, good, I, One of my favorite self-made rules is good gets better and bad gets worse. So mm -hmm. behave accordingly. Because if you fall into the pit and you don't bring yourself out as quickly as possible, then things will happen around you that reflect that pit. And that's no good, you know. That that's you know. I went through a bit of a funk at the beginning of this year, and I just was really having a hard time connecting to anything. And so I just finally, I had a couple of other readers who are good friends of mine, and we were talking about it, and they said, "You're downloading. You're getting information. Your body and your mind aren't ready to use yet, but it, you can't get a a big bucket of information." I, while you're trying to do all your other stuff. So it's taken that away. Mm -hmm. Just to make you have to rest. And so it was really in July that one day I woke up and I felt like I feel different today. I was really awake. I was really all here. And I realized, keep watching me, guys, because someplace in the next couple of years, whatever was going on there is going to show up. But uh, one of the things that I've had to learn is there that we really are the magnet of our own future. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if the harder I tried to say, I'm not in this funk and I'm going to get out here and do these things, the further those things got away from me because the magnet inside me was saying, no, you're getting this information, you're getting this energy and you need to have it rather than what your ego thinks you need. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's very true. That's very true. And, uh, you know, if I could could add anything, it would be that in line with Saturn, Saturn's logic is much more to not do something or drop something or let go of something than it is to bring in something. The only exception would be where you are bringing in positivity because that's an overall principle that Jupiter has domain over. So that's totally true. But with Saturn... Uh, one, for example, one strategy, what I'll notice is the same strategy I've used in the past in sports and, and where you need lots of vitality is mm -hmm. the more empty the body is, the better it feels. Mm -hmm. So one strategy is if you don't feel so good, the solution isn't to eat more and put more in. It's stop for a while. Go, you know, drink tea, wait for as many hours as possible. This, by the way, is what's behind all the religions encouraging periods of fasting or like oh, how you fasting, see it, yeah. you know, so this is a way to feel your spirit, your, your, which is your vital energy, which is your sun energy. Once mm -hmm. that comes back, your optimism naturally emerges, right? Mm -hmm. And so then the whole thing becomes more clear, more intuitive. But if you make the mistake of thinking, oh, well, I don't feel good. So the solution is, you know, eat some rich food and you know, that's going to make things worse, especially on a Saturn transit that I've spot spotted in the past, you know, recently and in the past, Saturn is around, or, or if, for instance, if you drink a lot of alcohol, things like that, it'll make it worse. So mm -hmm. the idea is less for a while, and that'll help you in the near term, and it'll stay with you as momentum for later, you know, right. challenges, right? Yeah, because I can, well, you didn't know me when I was at my height, but I used to weigh over 300 pounds. Mm. And I've lost more than 100 of that, and I kind of vary in there, but, and I'm, but the way I did it was there was fasting was part of my eating regimen. And it really is true. And when you break those fasts, you think, Oh, I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to mm. go out and eat something that outside my fasting window or whatever. And it's not a treat. It's like a little kid with too much Halloween candy, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, and I mean, this is the thing that that's something that everyone has to do themselves, you know, lots and lots of that practice to become familiar with how your body's reacting because you're, you know, this, I, I really relate to the biblical, you know, the biblical adage, the body is the temple. It really is, you know, when all, when all is said and done, your basic 
grounded physical vitality anchors everything. And if it's not there, you have a problem. You, know, you have a problem because you're filtering through something, you know, dense and dark and dreary, and you're not going to think straight, you know, and everything will seem problematic. And, and then the worst thing is then on top of that, you know, it's like that thing. Do you ever notice how you bump your head into things or you do, you know, you literally injure yourself, the lower your energy is. It's like you, you literally can't see the obstacles around you, you know, whereas if vitality is there, then, then you navigate so much better, right? I have a, a story about that. I was reading a young woman when I, I used to read it in a wine bar at a table, and I was reading her tarot, and I said, I said, you do everything for everybody. And she was about to become a freshman in college. And she said, well, it's, you know, I've got the car and I've got the time and yeah, da, 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 da. And I said, you're burning yourself out. And if you go to college with this attitude of I have to do everything for everybody, there's going to be all these college freshmen that are just as lost as you are. And they're going to be looking for somebody to pick them up and make them go. And she said, oh, no, I, I'm going to have a, I have a strength with strangers. Well, I was looking at her cards. No, you don't. Um, anyway, she came back to see me about nine months later at the wine bar and her uncle who has a vineyard. We have a lot of vineyards in Texas. I know that sounds weird, but we have some really good ones. And her uncle had a really good one. And he was having his uh, night when they they open up parts of the wine bar and people come in for wine tastings. She came and she said, I have to talk to you. And I said, well, you're looking good. School seems to be going along okay for you and she said two days after we had our conversation she fell down the stairs and she broke her dominant arm in three places so it was in this incredible cast and she was so right-handed that she couldn't do anything with her left hand so and it was about a month before she had to go off to school so she had to rely on everybody else to help her get ready to go to school. And then she got on the campus and she had to rely on other people to do the things she always thought she, sh she had to finally open up her, her left side, her left, since she was dominant, right, left was her receiving. She had to open up her li li receiving side. And she said, I kept hearing your voice. If you open your receiving side up, someone will be there to help you. And so she said she would never have made it her first semester if it wasn't for all these people helping her. And she said it was so galling to her the first three weeks when she had to ask other people for help. And then she began to understand watching them. They really enjoyed helping her. She wasn't just a pain in their butt, but she was, you know, and she made some really good friends through her experience. And she talked to the school psychologist who I'm sure is like, still have getting their eyes to roll to the front of their head. But she told him about this woman told me I had to have this lesson because otherwise I wasn't ever going to be a full person. And now I'm feeling, am I crazy? Because now I feel like I understand all this stuff. And the psychologist said, no, wherever you get help from, you get help. So she just came to tell me that she now had a fully functioning right and left side and she was going to make it. So it really is true. It's what, you know, don't make the universe break your arm. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, in that case, it's so literal because if you if you break your if you're right right dominant, then you're constantly turning on your left brain, you know, because mm -hmm. it, the hemispheres are reversed. So then, if you have to use your left hand, you know, left anything turns on the right brain, which is the intuitive part of the psyche. Right. And so then, uh, yeah, it's it's a totally literal thing in her case. But yeah, good for her. That's uh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we have those experiences, and I'm sure had she not met me, she would have broken her arm still, and she'd have had to figure it out. But she said, I just couldn't believe I could hear your voice in my head saying, you have to learn to let other people do things for you, too. It's not a bad deal. They want to. Yeah, yeah it's totally true. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've been uh, 100%, and, and uh, you know, the, the notion that you do that, and not only are you improving that situation but it's also helping you you know to navigate better going forward mm -hmm. because it, it'll stay as a as a thing you know as a call it what you like karma momentum mm -hmm. stays with you and makes it easier 
So everything you're doing is in that sense, you're not wasting energy ever by, by trying to connect, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. Growing up can actually be pleasant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Uh, what true. do you do about people who are right-handed and left-footed? Um, what do I, what do you do? I mean, what, I mean, how does, how does mixed dominance? Because my whole family's full of, I had brothers that could bat right or left-handed. I had a brother who could pitch right or left-handed. And they were both equally as good. Of course, he was a little kid. He hadn't firmed up into a full-fledged being yet. But, um, but I happened to be right-handed and left-footed. And we didn't know that till I was in high school. And you know how you run up to the thing and you have to jump over the little, the little hurdle? Mm -hmm. I'd run up to the thing and I just, it's like my body didn't know what to do with it. Finally, my gym teacher said, go get in the left-handed line. And I said, but I'm not left-handed. You know, Don't put me over there with those left-handed people. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. And she put me in there and I ran up to the pole and I just sailed over it. And I said, what's wrong with me? And she said, no, you've just got mixed dominance. You know, she understood what it was in the physical world, but I've never understood what it is in the metaphysical world. I figured I just don't have a side that's a side. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I can think of that it goes to the, you could say almost the heart of spiritual work is, is doing something in a more conscious way where you mm -hmm. are aware that you're doing something. And I mean, have you ever tried, you know, brush your teeth with the opposite hand, how difficult that is. Mm -hmm. But amazingly, your body will learn anything. If right. you just stay with it enough, and at first, and this is typically Saturnian, the Saturnian message is, oh, yeah, yeah, c c complain. Of course, it's irritating at first. Then you get better and you conquer that territory. And in a way, who cares? Right hand, left hand. But something happens because mm -hmm. you approach. So basically, you're right handed, left footed. It doesn't matter as long as you're trying something, you know, to, to somehow uh, tune into the conscious balance and, and do something right. with it it'll send you messages, you know, and uh, of course, what I notice, and maybe you've noticed this too, is all of this too is, you know, back to the idea of physical vitality. What I notice is that I can gauge by my ability to do any of these things by how high my vitality is. The lower my vitality is, the more I think, ah, oh, I can't, I don't even believe it. I think, oh, left is, who, who needs that stuff? So it's kind of all working in tandem, but there are ideas, you know, to keep in mind and, realize if you're working steadily this way for long enough, you'll build enough momentum that you'll be doing really well most of the time. And even if it isn't all of the time, most of the time is pretty good, you know? Yeah. As I understand 75, it. I take most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So what other big planet changes? I know there's some right as we go into the election. Well, so the one coming up now, in October, there are two stations, the Jupiter station and the Pluto station. So that's a pretty big month in, in, a, in an election year. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can expect it to be. Uh, the Pluto station, that isn't great, but I'm encouraged by the fact that, for example, in the in the um, Israeli conflict, because the, there was a station in, in October of 23, right. Pluto and others, another one, but they don't play well for Netanyahu. And I think that he's really causing problems, you know, and through the yeah. way, because he wants to save himself. He's kind of like a Trump figure. They're not really pulling for the country they're in, they're pulling for themselves more than they're pulling for the country. Mm -hmm. But likely it'll be, it could get tense. I'm, you're already hearing some things about Ukraine too, you know, the, the Pluto stations and the idea of really troubled places in the world, uh, it, they, they go hand in hand. And then, but the Jupiter station, that that's much better. That's, uh, you know, happy, uh, even elated energy. And I think that'll play really well for the, for the people that are on the blue side of the equation. It, mm -hmm. I think that, the other side will think in some ways that they're happy too, but they're going to find out that maybe they're not so happy. 
mm -hmm. a little after that. Um, so, but you know, once again, in the on the personal level, if you know a planet like Pluto is stationing, and a planet like Jupiter is stationing, and you want to go to the peak of that to do the best possible mm -hmm. job with it, Pluto is that transformation and change planet. It wants to change something. So rather than thinking, well, if the whole world changed to suit my my needs, mm -hmm. well, it probably isn't going to do that. Really, it never does that. There's always some problem somewhere. So tune into changing yourself, right? Because mm -hmm. the energy is there. The planet is stationary. You can plug in. Jupiter is there to say, focus on the high end. You know, focus on how can I become relaxed, optimistic, positive, because right. that attracts better. This is why, for example, doing gratitude practices is so popular, you know, in the New Age community, mm -hmm. because a gratitude practice is Saturn focusing on Jupiter. It basically says, well, you know, you might have some difficult things happening, but what's good about what's going on right now? And right. usually you can think about some things that are good, and that immediately puts you in a better place. You know? well, um, I know that when I look back on my life, and I can remember things I thought was just like the worst thing that could have ever happened to me. How did that happen to me? Why am I here? Why is this? And it was usually having to change a job, a position where I was living or something that I'm a Taurus. I don't move easily. And <laughs> put it mildly. And I realize now that I just hung on way too long and the universe's only way to help me get out of it was to push so much change there that there was no choice. I mean, virtual, well, there was a choice. I could have sat there and been miserable, but apparently I got miserable enough to get out. And so when I see changes coming towards me now, I don't fight them. And it's just a whole lot more peaceful. Mm -hmm. Well, that's another, by the way, that's another peaceful energy is high in Taurus, you know, because... Uh, Taurus, mm -hmm. the, the Buddha is rumored to have been a Taurus, and one of the greatest Zen masters of the 20th century, Shinri Suzuki, was a Taurus, mm -hmm. and neither of those had any interest in, you know, Taurus is a money sign, but really a practical earth sign, mm -hmm. so you can find a lot of the finan financiers in there as well, but finding that peace, it's really that peace and security that one is seeking as a Taurus, but you're right that it's a fixed sign, so then it's harder to change. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, if you say, well, the only way that change can come is if I take some kind of action, even if the action is just mental at first, because you may not know what to do you know, mm -hmm. in actual physical terms, you do something which can be a form of non-doing too. You know, if, you, right. if you decide, I'll just do nothing, but I'm going to do conscious nothing. That's an action that will have a result that will mm -hmm. take you in the right direction. So there's always something you can do in that sense, even if it isn't some big action that you think will solve all your problems. Yeah, yeah. well, I don't think that, I don't think there's any one planet or any one set of angles that's ever going to solve all the problems because we're here to solve problems. Yeah, no, and by the way, that's the thing about the planets and the angles and all. They don't stop. I mean, you got to get used to that. It, wherever you are, it's moving. You know, the whole universe, by the way, everything is moving. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of the, to me, one of the most fun astronomical facts is that the less big or the, you know, the smaller something is, mm -hmm. the slower it moves, even though it's moving pretty fast. Like the moon, it moves around the earth pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Then the earth moves around the sun faster and mm -hmm. the sun moves around the galactic center faster, faster still, and the galactic, the whole thing is going somewhere <laughs> at a reckless speed. We, you know, they mm -hmm. call it the great attractor. You know, scientists mm -hmm. are funny because, you know, they claim to know everything. And then you ask them, well, how does this work? It's going toward the great attractor. What is that? You know, it's yeah, a word. I mean, <laughs> nobody knows or whatever. But the speeds are incredibly fast. So even though things look like they're stationary, no, they're moving. And if someone were to show you a some way of this, showing you your body cells, you know, your entire whatever you are, you would see all kinds of moving, moving, moving energy. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's everything is in constant motion that way, right? So that's true. Yeah. And that's why when we shifted, was it 2017, we shifted out of a something in the galaxy that sort of protected 
our solar system from photonic energies, from all the really weird rays that come from far, far out in space. The hmm. photon said in the 70s, they'd have to build these giant cave-like places, and they felt really great if they caught one. Because so, they actually pass through the Earth. Well, all of a sudden in 2017, scientists started seeing the rate of this change. And now they realize we're in a belt that geologists knew was there, but no scientists, there's no, well, there, there are records, there are spiritual records about that this great change happens. But they could actually see, I remember, in because I work a lot with crystals in 2018, 2019, they were talking about how in the past they'd seen where the rocks were actually changed because so much energy hit the earth. But nobody knew. They kept trying to figure out what could have done that. Well, we had this shield over us that was stopping it from coming in. Now we don't. And now I think they say we have 13,000 years of being exposed. And one of the other things when I was studying this, uh, when I was trying to figure it out, figure out with my little non-scientific Weasley brain. I have an arts degree and a master's in business and physics was not my favorite class. But they figured out that this kind of consistent bombardment for like the next 10,000 years could change the rocks. It could actually physically change the crystals and rocks. And I know how hard rocks are because I work with them and I sense them and I, I, Actually, some rocks I can feel that they actually do move; that they they move in our hands; that their their vibration happens too. But um, and this has affected the Schumann resonance, which is the what they call the heartbeat of the world, because so many photons are going through the core, and that's where the Schumann resonance comes from. And one guy explained his view of what was finally going to happen is that one day the center of the world was gonna gong like a bell. And that's why they said all the energy lines had to be so straight and fixed and set up. Because, and it's to give art to change our energy. And then I was like, how are we gonna change our energy? And when I was looking at stories of when they were beginning to put together this photonic rain coming in from the universe, there was a woman who's a scientist in cancer research and they were checking down on the genetic level of people they were treating. And they were seeing changes that their medicines or their, what they were doing shouldn't have caused. Then they checked some people who weren't in cancer research. And the changes were happening there, too. And she goes, what could be hitting us that's changing us that much? And she had kind of a timeline because they'd gone back and looked at the research materials. And she happened to be married to an astrophysicist. And he said, what dates did you say? And the dates of the changes they were seeing in the genes matched very closely to the dates they were seeing in the shifts of photonic energy. So it may be, you know, when you hear all those ancient aliens, are they coming back to rewire us? They, the universe may be doing it all on its own. Yeah, well, this is the thing, right, that... Uh... If you ponder the the solar system where we live, mm -hmm. then you realize that the sun it it's going around the galactic center and it takes uh, two hundred and fifty million years to do that. Mm -hmm. So now you realize, well, it's in some corner somewhere, but you know it goes through all kinds of things as it's going mm -hmm. through, and you know that you know it explains ice ages and it explains all kinds of things there may be areas that are really turbulent and areas that are much better so yeah if it's lined up in a certain way it's going to be a lot more favorable than not i mean because we're talking here but if you, know, you and i are existing in this in this era if the situation became too cold or too hot then nothing's happening you know that's right and that, that could we've go on for who knows how long we better hope the dna shifts quickly <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> really. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. The thing about that is that even if you say we're in a zone could be more favorable, yes, the statistics will say more people will do better, for example. But it's still up to each individual to find their way because in every era mm -hmm. you find people that do well and people that don't do so well. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that have a lot of trouble. 
with the situation and the themes are pretty similar. You know, I, I like watching historical videos where they explore past eras and I'm always struck by all the echoes, you know, and I go, oh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. the same thing we're doing now. Seems like the same foolishness or the same smart type of reasoning. That's up to each person to figure out within their own mind, mind and body. Is a slow learner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, overall, though, you, it, I think the argument is that more people are, you could say, getting it together. You know, there's more consciousness. That's definitely right. true. But there's also places where there's an terrible lack of consciousness. And it, it, that's up to each person. Very dark places. And they, they seem dark. When you read about them, they make you feel dark. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then in the closer to the backyard, without getting into the entire galaxy, the Pluto cycle that started in 08 and mm -hmm. is ending now, mm -hmm. that cycle is good in a way because, I mean, think about it, Obama is elected. Mm -hmm. at the beginning of the cycle, Kamala at the end of the cycle. That's a big, important change that mm -hmm. was needed. And the U.S. tends to have an effect on the entire world because the U.S. is the the current, you know, literally it's an empire. Mm -hmm. um, but we've also seen all kinds of problems on the uh, bottom end of Pluto, which is Pluto is the fascist. Pluto wants to dominate and wants to do a top-down type of thing, and it's been quite a struggle. My anticipation is as Pluto gets into Aquarius now, for the next 20 years, literally, it moves away from that. And yeah. it's uh, now it's not, again, if people say, oh, that's a utopia. No, because then think of the dark side of Pluto and Aquarius would be, for example, corporations will vie for more power because corporations are groups, you know, mm -hmm. of, of people, literally. And that would be one of the dark sides or things like AI, we have to sort through that because there's tremendous potential, but there's also a lot of potential for darkness, you know, emerging from AI as well. So it's never perfect, but at least we know that a, an era, you know, that began in a way, and, it, and it, it curiously too, uh, when it was right in the middle, so think of a planet enters a sign. This happened, by the way, also with the previous cycle of Pluto was Pluto and Sagittarius, which began in the mid 90s and went until 08. And the mid part of that was 9-11 because Sagittarius is international, Pluto and Sagittarius is international terrorism, basically. That's the mm -hmm. best way to, you know, it's Al-Qaeda and all of that. Mm -hmm. The middle is the worst, and then it moves to the other end. The The midpoint of Pluto was when, when Trump came into power. Right there, that was when we had Bolsonaro in Brazil, it was pretty mm -hmm. much all over the world. Now you're seeing that the energy is shifting away from these guys, you know, in multiple places. So yeah, because we had a master class and how it shouldn't work with Hitler. Yeah, no, I mean absolutely, but, but people, you know, people keep their eyes open. But my favorite image of Pluto is it's a P, but then it has a little wedge on the bottom of the P. Mm -hmm. As it moves forward, whatever sign. It's like digging into that sign and it's digging out all the crappy stuff. Yeah, no, it, it is. I mean, the, the Plutonian, you know, uh, this is where astrology can be almost comedic when you're experiencing it in real time. Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, come on, uh, seriously, uh, does it really rule these things? So Pluto, because it's uh, because of what it is, because it's the under uh, the underworld, it rules the underworld. Mm -hmm. So then immediately you think, well, what what would I put in the underworld? sewage right for example right, right? so right. trust me when i tell you that when i ran into a plumbing problem with a major saturn pluto transit i was seeing that before my very eyes it was so obvious it's i mean it's funny in a way but it's not funny when you get the bill right i know so it's not funny when you have to live with the mess yeah and that too yeah it would be lovely if our sewage always just left our house and went somewhere else you know yeah or like remember that movie um from way back, uh, Max, Mad Max in Thunderdome, mm -hmm. and there was a character that lived under the ground and he had a telescope and he could see the city and he, he was literally controlling the city using the city's waste because the waste was what was powering all the, all the, uh, you know, the lights and the electricity mm -hmm. that you see this a lot in, in, in movies, books too, but movies especially, you see the themes, the astrological themes 
mm -hmm. whoever is creating it mostly unknowingly will, will project and then you'll see that maybe the director or whoever the producer had a lot of Pluto whatever but point is they're showing you actual living archetypes that are in our lives all the time but our role our job as I understand it is get to know them really well and do them better just do them mm -hmm. better because for instance Pluto if you get Pluto wrong you're going to go really dark you're going to go really dark and when someone is being racist and evil like Trump for instance mm -hmm. that's his Pluto running amok and that always has bad results, you know. Sooner or later, it'll turn on you, you know, and it'll become a problem. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I, the universe wants to seek balance. One thing I've always sensed from reading, and I've been reading cards since I was 12, is they want to make things balanced. They want to make things even out. They don't want things to be too far over this ledge or too high up this mountain. It mm -hmm. wants it to be in a place where we can understand it. And I think that's really important. One of the reasons I've studied astrology, I do not do what Andre does. I, but I understand just enough to be dangerous. And I, when I was studying it, that's what I had the feeling. The day I started to study astrology, though, was the day that Iran and Iraq went to war. Hmm. <laughs> you can remember, many of you won't know when that happened, but it was a deal. And so our teacher said, well, we're going to draw today. So you'll have, and I have it in my book of, I studied astrology before you could put the numbers in a computer and get an answer. Mm. I did the old ephemeris and the little wheel and the figure, all that. I have my little pencils and pens. And Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that, that's the same with me too. All, uh, your computers were just coming online and, uh, it's, it's really now we're in an era where computing power makes it a lot easier but there were advantages to not having a computer because I did a lot of things by hand and so I you know doing a lot of the drawing and so then the, the symbols stay in your mind and so forth so that and was helpful other things are within a range within a range of being readable if they're five or ten degrees either side of and stuff that's all very very physical Mm -hmm. when you're drawing it on a piece of paper as opposed to yeah no absolutely i mean that's the thing that that the probably the hardest thing when you're studying astrology is to get far enough in it which usually takes a year or two of you know playing mm -hmm. with it where you just see it's really obvious that there are relationships between even things like the moon you know the moon is spinning mm -hmm. around and around and it's contacting your planets and you start to see a pattern that keeps repeating, you know, 13 mm -hmm. times a year, it goes through everything. And you start to realize, oh, this is like a, this map and it's constantly testing me to see, okay, how well are you doing this? You know, the moon is hitting this one or that one. And you're getting reflections all the time. But at first it's, it's more difficult because you simply, ha it's like a language. You haven't yet quite, you know, figured out the grammar enough to and, spot the And patterns. I'm not sure if I had just learned it by having it thrown up on the screen for me, if I, because I learn, it's like the same way I learned cards. I could see the cards next to each other. I could see how they fell. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've I've actually worked with programs that read. You know, they'll lay the cards out for you, and it always feels like a very distant kind of using your energy and connecting to your spirit. But maybe that's just because I'm old and old fashioned, and I was born in nineteen in the nineteen forties. So. I know it's true, though. It's true because the more personalized it is, the better. Like one of the things that I always tell people that I teach in classes is, is you, you, you've got to do this yourself and sense what's happening. Feel it in your bones because otherwise it won't work. And it's also the logic that when someone says something, try to find out why someone mm -hmm. said, like you read an astrology interpretation, why is that being said? And you can correlate it to where the planets are so you understand rather than you probably remember in school when I remember that like you I wasn't particularly great at physics and if there was a problem that I just couldn't understand what the heck they were trying to figure out I would plug it in the formula and hope for the best and of course get terrible results and get rebuked by the teacher. <laughs> did, you, did you finish physics? Oh no I, I did but it was rough. <laughs> I had to go into the counselor's office to get on my hands and knees to get it taken off my high school transcript. I mean <laughs> he did better. And then I married a physicist, but he taught me a lot about physics. He taught me a lot about quantum physics, which is 
for those of you who are listening to it, we're talking about vibrations moving in on vibrations and all that. That's very quantum. And um, when Bill was dying in 2004 and he was in the hospital, I was talking to him and he goes, you know, they're going to figure out how you do what you do, how you read cards. And my attitude's always been, at least with the card thing, it works. So I'm not going to rattle a cage. But it doesn't mean that you cannot learn systematic things to make it easier, like learn one through nine and different things to, to learn it. But I was just like, honey, I don't care. And he goes, but it's in quantum physics. And he gave me a book and I didn't read the book till five years after he was gone. And it was a quantum physicist talking about and when I was reading what he was talking about, I'm going, oh, I know those energy shifts. I under, I mean, understood it because I understood it through who I am and what I do. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing that, that I, I put that all under the the umbrella of intuition or something in you that, that a certain zone you get into. Mm -hmm. And that's always the case. I mean, no matter how much you know, then there's the next chart or the next reading or the next anything and it'll just depend on how connected you are to do the job and you can't really I mean you can teach that but not in the sense of saying you know you can awaken it you can yeah you can awaken it. it yeah you can't do 10 steps and say you can't no. say follow one two three four no. those are the steps to get you in that zone and then it's a non-verbal place that you discover in yourself and that's the one thing that you and I were talking about and I think we're getting to an hour so we don't want to keep these people up forever. Um, anyone who's made it this far, yay for you. Yeah. Um, Congratulations. Hope we didn't bore you too much. No, they're probably <laughs> the people I'm going to talk about now. Right now, there's a lot of energy flowing in. And it may have been flowing in for all of our lives. We don't know. But the scientists now know that because two black holes are trying to crash together at the edge of the universe, they send out these giant waves of energy. And we can feel them. And they're foretold in how your planets line up. And, but there's a lot of people who are, in, who are enlightened and a lot of readers and stuff were feeling this huge shift inside of us. And, and then other people are saying, I sense something's going on, but I, they don't feel like it's a shift. They just sense something's coming in. And then there's the people in the corner who don't know what's going on. Uh, because they haven't bothered to awaken it. But a lot of people are waking up to their intuition in ways they never thought they would. And and it's scary. I guess it's scary. I kind of was born in it, but I've wor worked with friends who, I had a friend one time who she really started sensing things and knowing things. And she came to me one day, she said, I've got a brain tumor. I know I've got a brain tumor because everything should this. And I kept saying, no, you're just highly intuitive. So what can I say? Yeah. I mean, I mean you just say, so, go, to the, go to the doctor, get tested, rule out the tumor and then continue. Yeah, if you rule out your tumor, then, you know. <laughs> but um, anyway, it was great fun talking with you. This Likewise. is going to be, it's going to be a bit of a ride, but it can be less of, you can kind of pick whether it's a merry-go-round or a roller coaster depending on your own attitude yeah i know no, the, the yeah, i think a person's attitude you know is the key it's the key mm -hmm. what you do with it is the key because from that vantage point more energy even when it's difficult is better it's better because like they say in the chinese you know system mythology whatever where they say that their symbol for crises is the same as opportunity. It's true. Yes. It's a hundred percent true. When something yes. is happening, the correct way is to realize, okay, what's happening here that is really important that might help me to navigate better henceforth, rather than thinking I've just been captured by the Vikings and I'm being tortured or whatever, you know. Yeah. So, the, the devil the, in an in a Asian uh, or yeah, Asian um, tarot deck. That's what he is. He's a little guy. I have a deck and he's jumping up and down on the top of a chest. He's a little devil. And it says, will it ch ch chest open for good? Or are you going to let the little devil jump on it? So <laughs> good summary. Perfect. Anyway, so thank you for inviting me to come over and speak to you in your garden. 
Oh, it was a pleasure. Yeah, more like my my uh, your it's forest. My, my forest. Yeah, with the sun trying to break through. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll say goodbye to everyone and pick mm -hmm. it up sometime soon. Okay. Bye, everyone, for now.